All right, guys, I'm gonna do a video here. I've, I've been working on a lot of ball stuff on the car, and I've got a, quite a few of my subscribers that's mentioned in the comments that they like my little tips I give. I, I do wanna say I'm not an expert. I just, uh, you know, if I find something that works for me on my cars and I have good luck with it, I just, I like to pass that info along because it may help somebody. Because I'm always on a budget and I try to do everything as cheap as I can. And, uh, you know, anymore it's hard to do budget stuff. It's uh, you pretty much to build a really high end car, you gotta have a lot of money, and I do not. But I try to make my stuff look high end with no money. But anyway, as far as tips, uh, what I want to talk about is uh, uh, I'm gonna cover three things, and it's not really there's only like one or two tips. The other thing is just something that's kind of cool. But one of the things I want to talk about is glove box door adjustment. Uh, I'm going to talk about the differences in brake fluids, dot three, dot four, dot five, and also I'm going to cover uh, a magazine. If you're an old school magazine guy like me, you like car magazines, this may be a magazine that you do not know about, and it's awesome. Uh, anyway, I'll get started with the glove box door. Uh, you know, these cars, 55, 56, they bolt onto the dash with a hinge. There's three number eight Phillips screws that go down here that screw it to the bottom of the dash itself. So occasionally you will run into this you'll you'll bolt your glove box on you'll notice the bottom down here is sticking down like the glove box door is hanging out further than the dash itself so if you ran your finger your fingertip would hit the glove box door so a quick adjustment you can do is take those three screws out of the hinge where it bolts to the dash slide in some fairly thick little washers like i use some little number 10 hardware store washers and uh, it's only because that's all I had here. I didn't have any number eights, but the number tens I have here are a little thick. Anyway, I put them in there. It's basically a spacer to get the hinge up off the bottom of the dash. But when you put it back together, it's even. So in case your glove box door is hanging down and it bugs the crap out of you, uh, you can do that with just spacers. It's just an adjustment, and some people may not know, so that, that could help somebody. The other thing I want to talk about is brake fluids. And, and i got to say, I don't have... The only personal experience I have with brake fluids up till now is DOT3. Every old car I've drug in, I've just put DOT3 brake fluid in it. I've been done. I've never had an issue, but I've always heard of a brake fluid that's made that doesn't hurt paint. Um, so that interested me mainly because this car, all the chassis components I customized, and it's all paint. I didn't have money to do powder coats. So everything's painted. So I didn't want to ruin my paint because it doesn't matter how careful you are bleeding brakes. Uh, even if I didn't get a leak, when I was back there bleeding that, I could have got one little drip on something that I couldn't see. And then later I'd find wrinkled paint somewhere. So that was my worry. Uh, so I started to do a little research on brake fluid. Well, I did what, did what most people do uh, when they're trying to figure something out is they'll go to a Google and type it in or go to a forum that they're used to, a car forum. Well, I found out that it's just like everything else. Uh, you're going to get 50% of these guys that are for it and 50% of these guys that are against it. And it's either, yep, it works, or no, it doesn't. So what I decided to do was my brake parts manufacturer that I put on this car, I called them. And so I talked to them personally about it. And I, I found out some interesting stuff. Now, i got to say, the, the main thing you need to know is how you're going to run your car. Um, the differences between dot three, dot four, and dot five, and there's also a, like a dot five point one or something stupid, is temperature rating. Um, you know, you don't want hot brake fluid when you're doing autocross or anything because you can lose your brakes or you know get spongy brake pedal and that type of stuff. Um, anyway, say you got big tube headers on your car and you got a brake line right there by your brake, or you know your brake line's right next to your header. You probably want a brake fluid that's uh, that will withstand temperatures a little bit more. So a good upgrade from dot three is dot four. Now I don't remember the temperature difference. Um, anyway, it's out there on some of the manufacturers uh, things, but anyway, that's why I'm going to cover a magazine. They had a tech article this month in good guys Gazette that, that covered this in detail. And I learned some stuff just from that as well, even though I called the manufacturer. Now dot five is the one that does not hurt paint. Um, but what I found out from that guy was if you plan on autocrossing your car or really, really working, you're giving your brakes a workout, racing, DOT 5 is probably not for you. But if you've got a street rod, you know, show car, uh, 
that's probably what you want to do. I found out that a lot of the, well, most pro builder shops will use a dot five because it doesn't hurt paint. So sounds like me right there. I'm not, not a pro shop thing. I'm just saying show car. I don't want to hurt my paint. Um, I'm not going to be autocrossing this car. I'm not going to go ripping it around. Uh, this is a cruiser. So uh, brake, dot five brake fluid is what I'm going to use. And it's mainly because of the paint. If I do get a spongy pedal, oh well, my paint's going to be fine. <laughs> Unless I crash, and then it'll be screwed. But anyway, that's the main difference. Uh, now you can mix dot three and dot four, but you cannot mix dot five with dot three and dot four. It is not compatible, so do not do that. Um, another thing I found out that was interesting out of the magazine article, I never knew this. Everybody knows brake fluid. The old conventional dot three brake fluids draw moisture, but I didn't realize it was two percent a year. So. You know, like for my old 87 GMC pickup I drive, the brake fluid's probably never been changed in that truck. So I'm going to plan on uh, cleaning that system out and completely flushing it out this spring. Uh, so that was a pretty cool eye opener right there. But uh, now DOT5 doesn't uh, draw moisture. So that's the other thing. It doesn't hurt paint. It doesn't draw moisture. It is silicone based, um, but it is synthetic. But And it's really expensive from what I found out. Because this morning I bought two bottles. I needed, I wanted to get three bottles, but all the store had was three, uh, but they're ordering more in. They're supposed to be there tomorrow, so I went ahead and got two today, but anyway, my wife's off tomorrow, so we're going to bleed the brakes on this thing. Hopefully, I'll have a working brake pedal in this car, but anyway, the other thing I want to cover is magazines. Now, like I stated, if you're an old school guy like me, you love car magazines. Like, that's what I grew up with was car magazines. I used to read my brother's car magazines when I was not even near old enough to drive, but you know, lately, magazines, they're pretty much going by the wayside because of the internet, but the prices at, uh, like, over-the-counter, uh, it's, I can't remember, it's like seven or eight bucks for a magazine, and they're not that thick. It's like, man, it's just, I just don't even buy them anymore. Uh, I've only had a subscription a few times in my life. I usually, I'll go to a store, like a grocery store or Walmart or something, and I'll get to flip through it, and if something interests me, then I'll buy the magazine, but... Otherwise, I really don't subscribe. But I ended up getting a subscription to Good Guys Magazine by joining Good Guys. I pay $35 a year, and I get a bi-monthly magazine. And i got to tell you, for a magazine, this is probably one of the best car magazines on the market besides, you know, the high-dollar, you know, Rotter's Journal, I think is what it is, or Street Road Digest, whatever it is. But this is a hell of a good magazine, and it's just like a car magazine. It has, they're not paying me to say this, by the way. I pay them, uh, but I am a member of Good Guys. 35 bucks a year, and you get a magazine twice. twice. Uh, it's bi-monthly, so every two months you get a magazine. But they have car show coverage. They, have, they go to shops. They show people, send in photos of what they're working on in their garage. So it's like projects. There's tech articles. There's uh, you know full-page spreads of people's cars that type of stuff, but um, anyway, so it's just basically a, a magazine, but it is double the thickness of your standard Super Chevy magazine. Not knocking Super Chevy, I've been a long time, since 1992 or three, I had a Super Chevy for, always in my house, uh, but I recently give them all away, but anyway, that is uh, thin, this is double the thickness, and it's also the Good Guys magazine is bigger that's not a whole lot bigger right well the bad part is is the last two issues of good guys gazette that i've got is this size but before they were this size so it was like you got a damn book so i was all in for that look at the thickness of that but every page is very high gloss detailed you know nice colored pictures and for me having to wear reading glasses it's good for me because it's bigger uh, stuff to look at but anyway again I'm not a spokesperson but I gotta say one of the coolest things about that I am wanting a set of four of those uh, it's a company called race ramps they make ramps but they have a thing called wheel cribs and you basically jack your car up and put your wheels on top of these and they they're stands they basically get your car up off the ground at car shows so you can put mirrors and lights under well I'm wanting to get a full set of four of those but they're a couple hundred bucks for four of them. And I've got an uh, ad in here from Race Ramps. And if you're a Good Guys member, you get like 
don't even remember what it was now, like 10% off or 15% off using the code on that ad. So that is awesome right there just for that. And another thing I want to cover before I cover the video or cut the video off. See that 55 right there on this month's issue? This is called the Matranga 55. It's actually the owner's last name's Matranga. But some people have probably heard of him. Um, anyway, this car was a grade 8 winner. Uh, for Detroit Auto Ram. I don't think it won the Riddler. I think it was another car. I don't remember. But anyway, this definitely won a grade 8 for sure. Um, I know the car is probably not for everybody because, you know, some people don't like that stuff. Some people do. But what I what I look at is craftsmanship and, and stuff like that when people build a car. And I got to say, if you want to see some awesome coverage of that car on a video, uh, go to YouTube and if you're not subscribed to Autotopia LA, you need to do that. It's a guy named Sean. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. It's not, I'm not giving him a shout out or nothing because he doesn't need my help. He has, he has the subscribers. But I have been a subscriber to his channel for a couple of years. He covers a lot of cars, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the owner. And all the videos are always awesome. Uh, I would love to take a class from him on video editing and stuff. But... He just recently did a video of this car with the designer. So you get to see all the specs on that car. And there was stuff that you didn't know about the car, like just from what I've seen on the internet, that was awesome. There's really killer design stuff that went into that car. And he explains why they did it, which is awesome. But anyway, again, I'm not uh, trying to give him a shout out. It's just Autotopia LA. It's a badass car channel from YouTube. And uh, I love it. But... He covers everything. He does imports. He does pro touring cars. He does low riders. I mean, he does a lot of stuff, but the videos are just awesome. But anyway, check it out. Autotopia LA and look, uh, it's probably like three weeks ago, I think he posted that on that Matranga 55, but you'll see it because it's a blue 55 on his. Click on videos. When you go to his channel, Autotopia LA, click on videos and you'll see it in there. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get back to work.